The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Barely a year ago, we were all praying that the Lord God Almighty will give us a leader. When the apostle, Professor Pokuina, was retiring, and at that time, he had also finished serving his term as the chairman of the church. We all prayed. And the good Lord gave us a leader. Samuel said, when Israel was in captivity in Egypt, they cried unto the almighty God and God gave them Moses and Aaron to bring deliverance to them. Later on, by virtue of evil and sin, they were caught in Babylon. And they cried again. And the almighty God brought Jephthah, Barak, and the rest, and Samuel, to redeem them. So what someone was trying to say was this, that God responds to the prayer of his people. And any time that his people prays, he responds by giving them someone. God's method has always been human beings. So when we pray that God should give us a leader, he gave us a leader. But that is not the end of the story. Once we pray and then God gives us a leader, you have to pray the leader through his stem. So I've just come to ask some of you to please pray with us. So that the almighty God will have mercy upon us. And just as he used our fathers of old, he will also use us. When God picks a leader, I don't think he takes the best of the people, no. He will normally take the weak to confound the wise. And I know... At least I can count you about 10 people who can do this work better than myself. I know that too well. I can count them. But I wonder why sometimes God chooses people like us. The reasons may not be totally known to me because God reserves why he chooses people. He doesn't have to confer with any of us. Now, but... All of us are temples of the living God. In the Old Testament, when Nebuchadnezzar besieged Israel, they never spared the temple. They looted the temple. Because it was in the temple that Israel kept her treasure. The things that were so precious to them, they kept them in the temple. So just as the temple of old, we as temples of God have deposits of God in us. And I believe that at any particular time, T, when God wants to do something, he looks at who has that deposit of which he can use in that particular time. And then the one whom he has deposited what he wants to use, he can pick as a leader to just lead the rest of the people so that he will pick what is on the inside of him and use for a material time. When he finishes, he puts him aside and picks another one. So the leader is not the superior of all the people, no. In fact, he is supposed to be the leader servant of the people. So as I stand here, what the Lord deposited in my spirit, I have shared it with the executive council of the Church of Pentecost. Then we move ahead as executive and then we communicated it to the national area heads for them to buy into the vision. We have been praying about it. That this possessing the nation's agenda will work. I believe that churches do not necessarily promote nations. And God's agenda is not about church. It's about taking nations. In fact, if God is not the Lord of lords, then maybe he's not the Lord at all. He is the Lord of the nations. He created the worlds. And he must be the king of kings and the lord of lords over the nations. 
and the agents of God's transformation of nations is the church. The presence of church do not necessarily build nations. Otherwise, Ghana would have been the richest nation. Every hundred meters there's a church. Yet the nation is not changed. We are bedeviled with corruption and all sorts of challenges. The Bible says righteousness exhausts a nation. That is why we are saying that so far as the vision 2023 is concerned or the five-year vision is concerned, we want to possess nations. That is to equip the church to transform every sphere, everywhere you work, wherever you find yourself with the values and principles of the word of God. So we carry the word of God to our homes, to wherever we are and shine as lights and drive away the darkness. That is the only way that we can change nations. Otherwise, church is of no use. The essence of church is to give life to the society. If the church is not impacting the society with life, then there's no need to go to church. This burden has been shared, and we are still sharing it. But I believe that there is a constituency in this church of Pentecost that I need to touch the officership. We are operating in over 100 nations across the globe. We couldn't have gone that far but for the officers. If you look at all these elders here, they are unpaid workers of the Church of Pentecost. If we were to pay them, we wouldn't have even gotten money to expand the work in the UK. We came from Ghana and we planted a small church. And then we left it in the hands of you, the officers. Look at how wide and broad and deep you have built this church. In the UK alone, the Church of Pentecost is 18,979. 19,000 congregation, Church of Pentecost people. The officers in the church, let me start with the pastors. The pastors are 29 in the United Kingdom. How can 29 people work effectively among 19,000 people? It is impossible. But for the elders, but the officers alone, are 1,937. 1,937. That is how big the officership is. The elders are 649. The deacons are 449. Of course, the deaconesses, they are always in the majority. They are 839. If we were to pay just the elders, 649 of them where would we have gotten money to buy this house no when you take your area for one we have four ministers including the area head we have 119 elders 92 deacons 152 Deaconesses. So we have 363 officers in this area alone. Now, some of you might have come straight from work, if not the majority of you, just because the chairman has come. So you make an arrangement to go and meet him. You came on your own volition, got your own transport, but I didn't come here with my own money. Not at all. I sat in a car that belongs to the church. They drove me here. I didn't pay a penny. When we close, I will sit in the car and I will go home. But some of you officers will still go and stand at the bus stop searching for car. You get home and it's too late. Some of you, your children... Mostly the time you get home, your children are asleep. And those of us who have toddlers, sometimes it's a pity. They don't have any idea where you have gone. 
When I was in East Legon as a pastor, there was this afternoon that around 4.30 p.m., uh, I came out to go and look for something to buy. But just as I got out of my house, I saw two of my elders coming to my house around half four getting to five. They were still in their jackets. So I asked them, Elder Sari, where did you people go? So from church. We went to church in the morning, 8.30. Getting to five, you are still in your suit and tie. Where did you go? From church. How? From church. After church, I left them and I came home. But they held a presbytery meeting. When they finished, they went to visit those who were sick in the hospitals. So they are coming home and they want to pass by and give me the feedback of what really happened. Because they met someone who was really sick and they wanted to inform me. These are the elders of the Church of Pentecost. Yeah. We sacrifice and do all these things for us. We want to thank you so much for your lives. You see, we do all these things for the church. But sometimes we don't get the requisite praise and appreciation. Yeah. That one, don't expect it. Because Solomon says that those who come after us, they don't have any remembrance for those who have gone ahead of us. Don't seek their praise from us. It is not too natural to get praise from human beings. Hebrews 6, I read verse 10. God is not unjust. Oh, because of the children. Let me say God is not unjust. <laughs> when we went to America, I was trying to say 20, 30 I do baby now my brother, I'm so I was too tired. Yeah. So God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. God is not unjust. He will not forget. Human beings may forget, but God will not forget your work. And the love you have shown him as you have helped his people, help the church of Pentecost and continue to do so, God will not forget. He won't, not at all. He is a rewarder. If we have agreed as a church that you are going to be an unpaid officer, the God whom you are laboring will pay you. He, he rewards. He rewards us. Hebrews 13, 7 and 8. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Remember your elders, your dickens and dicknesses who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life if the outcome of their way of life was nothing to write home about, he wouldn't say, consider. I'm not talking about elders who will not lift a finger, but I'm talking about those who have committed to the church. The Bible says, remember, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Imitate their faith. There was this elder in my village he was such a powerful elder. So powerful. But the time that I, I knew him was old. He had grown already. And I sorry. I was going to visit his house one day. It was some hot afternoon. And I saw him dancing around his fish pond. Like that. An old man. So I thought that dancing alone... <laughs> it's not too good so let me just wait for him to finish dancing but I realized that he was not was not going to stop anytime soon so I did something like <clears throat> then he turned when he saw me he said Eric come, come 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 so when I got to him he said come and see come and see I thought he was going to show me something not knowing he was reading the bible 
And then he met this scripture that really worked in his spirit. And he left the Bible there and then he started dancing. You see how he's laboring the word? He would not preach as long as I do. He was, somebody was so brief. He taught us something. He said that people say that heaven, there are 12 gates. We shall walk on streets of gold. As for him, he doesn't care about the number of gates. All that he knows is that Jesus said, where I am, there shall my servant be. So he is working hard to go to where Jesus is. When he gets there and the gates are 12, praise God. If they are not 12, so far as Jesus is there, no problem. Look at his philosophy. That is a good message. When I was called into the ministry, I thought I should go and bid farewell to my mother. When I just jumped out of the bus, here was Edda Sari, the station. Say, said, Eric, I've heard that you have been called to the ministry. This work is not hard. Meanwhile, he's never been a pastor before. But he's telling me that this work is not hard. The, because the Bible says that God will send his angel to lead you. All he's demanding is for you to obey him. And then he looked at me and he asked me, Obey him so Eddie. See, yours is to follow him closely and obey him. And he asked me whether obeying him is difficult. I didn't know how to respond. Then he asked me again, and I nodded. That is not hard. Say, the work that you are going to do is not hard. And because of him, I've never felt the ministry as a load. Never. Never, 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 never. I've, I never, never, never. The ministry as a load, I enjoy it. I enjoy it because of that elder. It is the elders who train the pastors. There will be no good pastor who has not gone under the tutelage of a good elder. You can make it. So, on behalf of the executive council, we want to recognize what you do for the Church of Pentecost every day and night. We want to say a big thank you to all of you and still request that there's still lands to be taken. There are still nations to possess. There are still people to win for Christ. And then plead with you that you help us to move on. Brace yourself. Let us go on and do what God has asked us to do. May I respectfully ask you to stand I will request the International Mission Director to come again so that on behalf of us, the Executive Council members, he prays a prayer for you. And I want you to believe it. You may be sick, but because of your sacrifices, God will touch you. We want you to pray that God will quicken your spirit once more. If there's any one of you that wanted to maybe to give up, we want you to strengthen yourself. Your God is a rewarder. He may not give you the money that you desire, but he will give your children brains to go to school that you have never attended. Yeah. So that one day your grandchildren will be able to say, because our grandmother served the Lord. Shall we lift up our hands into them? Mini no beti delta.
Mountain team. Moon him. Moon Cosso da will radiate you, ma'am. If it's a moon name, sir. Mohawan will bread and your quack. I will radim. A radi, yet thou was. It was a sir. Woman, a jumaya for a more was sorry that. Ribiara was see. Mary Mane Ma A wunya me was see see wong a wanam won so na wu si was sorry. Wanya wa dia hofama a for a bo wa da je wa ho de won si ka wan a ho de wa de sorry wunya me de sum wo de bo a for e wa hon hom ne no kremo. So, when you are in your life, you say, why not my name is Bribi, I mention a name. In the world, you are the only one for your name. Fiosro. Neshirao. Fiosro. Neshirao. Fiosro. Neshirao. Shirao wang ni pedia. Ma wang apomote. Ma wang kwatente. Fa emma a year, a shrawon. Fa, if you dream one, some day, a shrawon. Fa, some, some conchrom, a nidia, a shrawon. Near a day, what drew her, man in yamre. O two for young coupon. One of us say, and was our best year here in Yama. Said your winner, me a winner tear when your yamu were Christo Yesumu. A radi, yet the old man for shawon, sir. Ya de wonku asha wonsa. Ya de wadjuma yefu asha wonsa. Ya de elders asha wonsa. Ya de dickness asha wonsa. Ya de dickens asha wonsa. E radi biya osuru. Na shuye wadum go wonsu. Biya osuru. Na shuye wunsire go wonsu. Hume e go wonsu. Na si em kwa duya. E wonfi. I'm a one quandan, you know. One at the radifi. I want my year near Doya, Eddie Wongichi. Now, which I want when your baby Fengua. When I dance the dear move, bet to me a beer one, no idea dance, they say, a radine and shuffle. Now she ain't here. Oh, my yinya when I dance the dear. You won't shram. A radiman simu ye. Mo ene mo mo kafo, mo ene mo ma, mo ene mo fi efo, mo ene mo busia. Eradin kamo, na onye ne huwe di chira moda. Omane ngusre wo musono, enya fufro adi chini biara. Na washe mo difi ni mo fi e baswa, mo hon ere masem. E wo Jesus di mo, amo tifonka amen. In the next five years, the theme is possessing the nations. We want to take nations. Jesus saved the world, and we must save nations. Every year, we will draw a theme out of the overarching one, possessing the nations. The first one that we are working with is, I will build my church. We just borrowed it from what Jesus said. Not that I am going to build a church of Pentecost. No, that is not the, the idea. But we want to examine what Jesus said, what he meant when he said, I will build my church. And we are praying that we will understand what the church means. That the church has been called to God to, in worship, but God has sent us out into the world to serve his purpose in the world. We are good in coming to church to worship, but we don't know that we have to change the world. So church service is just like halftime in a football match. You come here and you meet the coach. You will, you will have to examine how we played the first half. So when you come to church, we are just examining how we have lived our Christian life. And then we will let you lose to go and play the second half. And we don't intend to go and lose 
So that is the essence of church. Soon, church will be over. But Christianity is a way of life. You need to carry your light and then carry your sword wherever you go. We are praying that we'll be able to delve deep into this subject, I will build my church. The slogan for the next five years will be, I am an agent of transformation. When new themes come, we will still not change the slogan because we don't want to lose focus. Every one of us is an agent of change, an agent of transformation. When we say you are an agent of God, Jesus Christ was an agent of God. What that meant was that, according to scripture, God was in Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. But we are also agents of Christ. That is why Colossians says, Christ in you. So when you, when you sit at your office, remember that Christ is in you. He's using your eyes, he's using your hands to reconcile men unto himself. So you are an agent. That's why the Bible says you are an ambassador of Christ. Don't disappoint him and walk as such. This evening, I want to spend some time talking about the church as the people of God. The people of God. First Peter chapter 2, I read 9 and 10. First Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I want to take the reading again. But you are a chosen people. People that God has chosen from among the tribes and peoples and nations. A royal priesthood. This is a combination of two functions. You are a royal and you are a priest. You are talking about the fact that you are a king and you are a priest. God's special people. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So we have an agenda. We are a chosen people. A holy nation. God's special people to declare the praise of him who called us to the world. So he has called us and he has made that priests and kings, but that is not the end. We need to go out there and declare his praise to the people. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now, what this one is trying to say is this. You need to have an attitude of gratitude to God for what he has made you to be. We have to say, Father, I thank you. The apostle Paul said it. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer a persecutor, a violent man. I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. That is the Apostle Paul. He said, Father, I thank you for calling me into the ministry, the worst of all sinners. You are a chosen generation, a holy people. With that attitude of gratitude, let us go out there and speak forth his praise unto the world. Be a witness. Tell people that Jesus Christ came onto this planet Earth to save human beings and I am the chief of them. Look at my life. A holy people. Now, 
when we are talking about the holy people or the people of God, you may not understand it that much. The New Testament has to be teaching. But the Old Testament is more pictorial than the New Testament because it has to do with people moving up and down. So let us go to numbers. Let's look at what it means when we say that these are a people of God. Numbers 22, 5. This is what Balak said when he summoned Balaam to go and curse the people of God. Because these people were conquering. From Egypt, God was with them. They were defeating nations. And then they came close to his people. He saw them come close to his his people. The nation he surveys. And Balak was so afraid. 